all morning. The Fox 61 Morning News starts now. Good morning, sunshine. Happy Friday to you. We've made it to the end of the work week. Hope yep. you're having a great start to your day so far. Thank you for waking up with us here on Fox 61. I'm Symphony Privet. And I'm Tim Lammers. Good morning, everybody. Happy Friday. We are in store for another hazy, hot, humid day today. But unlike yesterday, we've got some possible strong thunderstorms to talk about. So that is absolutely yeah. our headline right over to meteorologist Rachel Piscatelli right now to talk about the where, the when, and just how many question marks we have at this point. Yeah, so uh, Rachel's going to time out the system for us. What are we expecting today, Rachel? Yeah, that's right, guys. So good morning to you. We are expecting uh, strong to severe thunderstorms to develop a little bit later on. That slight risk, which means a level two risk, has been extended to southern Connecticut, and we'll show you that in just a moment. I wanted to time this out for you and show you that you're more morning commute is going to be okay. So if you're heading out the door now, planning on not returning back home until five, six o'clock, great idea to download our Fox 61 news app and also grab that umbrella too and get those alerts that you're going to need over the course of the afternoon and evening. We have a rising chance for those scattered showers and thunderstorms to develop after about noontime, really closer to the one, two o'clock mark where that rising chance for showers and thunderstorms continues. We'll see that begin to taper off. That being said, we're going with the window of about 12, one o'clock to about 10 o'clock this evening. That's going to be the time frame. Not going to rain the whole time, and you'll see that in the hour by hour, but when it does rain, there is that potential to see those develop into the stronger to severe side. Temperatures out there this morning are in the 60s and 70s. Dew points are in the mid 60s, so humid, and the dew points will continue to rise over the course of the day today, really juicing up the atmosphere. 69 degrees in New Haven, 63 in Waterbury, 68 degrees in Chester. Good morning to you. 70 degrees in Groton, and you'll notice our satellite and radar is overall quiet this morning. Morning. And the hour by hour here is going to show you that the morning commute, yes, is dry. By about noontime, 1 o'clock, we're bringing in a rising chance for scattered showers to develop. By 2 o'clock, again, this is going to be very hit or miss. So while others are dealing with a downpour or a strong thunderstorm, others may be seeing some sunshine out there, humid conditions, and overall dry. We'll con to see, continue to see that trend through 5, 6 o'clock in the evening, and then we'll start to dry things out. But 8 o'clock, still dealing with maybe a scattered shower out there for some folks. So that's why we're going with the time frame of 1 to about 10 o'clock or so. We'll dry things out heading into Saturday. Saturday looks overall pretty pleasant, but we're thinking higher humidity too with temperatures in the 80s. Today, lower to middle 80s along the Connecticut shoreline. The more inland you go, the warmer it gets. 86 degrees in Meriden, 88 degrees in the capital city. Here's that severe weather threat for today. Level 2 risk has been extended well down into most of Connecticut. The majority of Connecticut now in a level 2 for the potential for those strong winds, but at the same time, time. We are also uh, bringing most of the threats for severe weather to the table. Hail is low, and there is also a low risk for some rotation. What does that mean? Well, a low risk to see a, a tornado develop, which will continue to watch the radar rather closely. So we have those afternoon and evening storms today, highs into the 80s. Overnight, we fall into the 60s. Heading through the day tomorrow, we're looking at mid-80s, more of the same for Sunday. Sunday, we bring in a better chance to maybe see an isolated shower in spots. That being said, I don't think you need to go canceling any plans for either Saturday or Sunday. They're going to be both uh, great days with mix of sun and clouds and humidity up just a bit. We'll talk about where we go from here and talk a little bit more about that severe weather threat for today uh, coming up in just a bit. But right now we want to get a check in the CTDOT traffic center uh, on out of the roadways. We're starting to see some road work wrap up now. Not bad though. 91 southbound is dealing with some minor delays out by exits 27 and 25 due to that road work wrapping up. But other than that, I mean, at this time, things are looking and running pretty smoothly into and out of the capital city. A live look outside out in New Haven 91, both the north and southbound side looking pretty good out in Bridgeport too. We haven't started to see our delays build along 95. So we'll peek in with our drive times Hartford 55 miles per hour New Britain Ave to the Hartford Tunnel on the eastbound side of 84 route to Glastonbury to the Founders Bridge. It's seven minutes Fairfield County 59 miles per hour from Darien to Westport Bridgeport to Fairfield. You're looking at a smooth six minute drive. We'll send things back over to you guys. Good morning. Good morning, Rachel. We're going to start with breaking news out of Waterbury. Uh, we know a 20 year old man died in a major crash that happened last night on I-84 West. State police said around 830, 20 year old Zachary Carlson of Danbury wound up rear ending a tractor trailer near exit 23 and he was pronounced dead at the scene. That did impact traffic as well. Exit 23 was closed for a while 
while, but has since opened back up. As for other injuries, we don't have any reports of them at this point, including the driver of the tractor trailer that was hit. And again, state police uh, did close down exit 23 before opening it back up. We also want to get you an update. A man is back in police custody this morning after he actually took off running from a courtroom and got away. Police did eventually find this man, 24-year-old Mariko Ellis, last night in East Hartford. The search for him began around noon at a Hartford courthouse. A judicial branch representative said Ellis was appearing before a judge who was preparing to raise his bond. Officials said Ellis sensed that his case was not going well and simply ran out of the room, ran out of the building, and off towards Park Street. They even said he left his shoes behind. Ellis was not in custody at the time, but was instead in court for three separate cases. And happening today, several colleges and universities across the state are getting ready for freshman move-in day. Uh -huh. you know, we talked about this the other day, and I feel like mine was a long time ago. <laughs> kind of a stressful process, but we got it done. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> I, I barely even remember mine. That's how long ago it was. And among the, uh, by the way, with the school squad's got you covered. Here's what the uh, the schedule looks like for today for move-in day. The University of St. Joseph is preparing to welcome its freshmen back starting at 9:30 this morning up in stores. They're going to be doing it at 8 o'clock. Lindsey Kane, UConn grad, by the way, going back to her old stomping ground. So we're going to check in with her as she's checking in with some of the early bird parents and students. And down at Albertus Magnus College, we're actually having meteorologist Matt Scott go down there to take us to all the controlled chaos of move-in day. He's also going to take you behind the scenes on how a college feeds 1,500 students that is going to be the focus of today's Foodie Friday. That's going to be pretty cool. And as students head back to campus, there is a new warning about potential scams targeting college students. The Better Business Bureau said scammers are using these five main tactics to steal the money and identities of college students around this time of year. The first scam is to uh, use fake credit cards to gain access to somebody's personal information. Second, are rental scams. They pose as apartment ads. You also have to be on the lookout for scholarship scams, grant scams, and online shopping scams. The Better Business Bureau recommends students regularly check their credit reports just to check if their identity has been stolen. And college graduates should be on the lookout for scams as well. Now, with Biden announcing some federal student loan debt relief, it's an opportunity for scammers to take advantage. So take a look here. Here are a few tips on how to avoid some new scams. So first up, get to know the terms of your student loan and the relief program before acting. Always do your research before sharing any personal information and never pay money for a free government program. I'll be careful with out of the blue calls, emails or text messages claiming to be from the government, typically the government will not contact you using these methods. You can expect more from the Fox 61 School Squad and also get more on fox61.com and on the Fox 61 app. It is 6.08 this Friday morning. We've got some new updates. A, a young Southington woman who was missing has been found. That's great news. According to Southington Police, Nyla Tolo was found in Hartford after her family reported her missing several days ago. Police said she was found sleeping on a park bench in Keeney Park in Hartford. She wasn't hurt. And they said she was alert when she was found. State police are also still investigating in Torrington after a woman's body was found in a park. The Department of Energy and Environmental Protection said first responders found her body at Burr Pond State Park just off the shoreline of the pond there. They have not released the woman's name and there's no word yet on how exactly she died.